In today's breaking news, are we witnessing the end of the SEC as their losing streak continues? But this recent loss is a whole new level of insanity. As we can see in this post from Fox Business journalist Enola Terrett New, a Utah judge has found the SEC engaged in bad faith conduct against crypto from the debt box. The judge has placed sanctions on the SEC for abuse of judicial process, ordered them to pay the legal fees of debt box and denied its motion to dismiss the charges without prejudice, meaning it will not be able to refile the same charges at a later date. So what does this ruling mean for the SEC, but most importantly, what does it mean for the American taxpayer? It looks like the sanctions imposed against the SEC here are monetary. The SEC will now be forced to pay the legal fees and their court costs of both debt box and the receiver. Right now, it's unclear how much those bills will add up to. But the sad thing here, the corrupt and outrageous thing here, the insanity thing here is because the SEC is a taxpayer funded agency, the SEC has basically just forced a bill on the American taxpayers for their own unlawfulness. Is that not just insanity? How sickening is that? The judge made it crystal clear that the SEC lawyers did not make an error. They lied intentionally. How corrupt must you have to be for you to be leading by example or meant to be and yet you're lying in courts? Quote, the critical evidence the commission offered to obtain and defend the Arc Parte TRO lacked any basis in fact, yet the commission nonetheless advanced that evidence in deliberately false and misleading ways. This goes about saying that it's a gross abuse of power entrusted to it by Congress. The SEC has undermined the integrity of the judicial process and in a way, yes, this is great news for crypto because the SEC has had a gross overreach on crypto for the longest time. But ultimately, at the same time, it's actually a very, very sad day because the SEC was once a great institution respected around the globe for its competence and integrity. But evidently, times have changed. Now it's time for accountability. The judge has found the SEC engaged in a gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress. But the real question lies, will Congress do anything about this? We have a post here from the chairman of the US House Financial Services Committee, Patrick Red Henry, where he stated, quote, Chairman Genza's enforcement team's egregious misconduct will have broad implications on the SEC's authority beyond his crypto crusade. Gensler requested more funding for enforcement last year. Now a judge calls out the SEC's abusive and deceptive legal practice. This must end. So Patrick Red Henry once again has said this must end. But again, how many times have we heard Congress issue warnings and send a letter and and certain subpoenas against the SEC and Gary Gensler. This in fact was stated in this video alone where Patrick Mudd Henry has stated time and time again that Gary Gensler and the SEC aren't doing anything right. He can't answer whether EFK is security and it's about time he gets subpoenaed. But again, nothing has come from it. It's about time we stop issuing threats and about time we start taking action. Issue the subpoena against Gary Gensler and the SEC because they do not care. And you need to start putting down some legal, put your foot down for God's sake. Put your foot down and issue the subpoena because they do not care. And don't just issue the subpoena because of their unfaithful allegiance to the law, but more importantly because of all the truth that's come out about the ETHgate crisis. ETHgate is very, very real. And Gary Gensler, Jay Clayton and Bill Hillman should be held accountable for failing to protect the citizens of the US United States of America. In fact, we have a bombshell post here from the digital asset investor with Stephen Norell the Ethereum whistleblower where he dropped an absolute bombshell. Listen very, very closely. Joe came to me one day and said, we're going to meet the Federal Reserve. And so this was in late 2014. And I said, why are we meeting with the Federal Reserve? And they're like, what's the Federal Reserve? Why are they interested in what we're doing? Um, and, uh, you know, we met with the Federal Reserve and it was, you know, a nice, polite meeting. Um, but I, I uh, let's just say I got the feeling that um, you know, when they said, uh, you know, you know, there's, uh, if there's somebody at the table, um, that's the one that's getting cheated and you don't know who it is, it's you, right. You know, so it's like, I wasn't in on it. Uh, but it was clear that there was something else going on. At least that's how I felt. And it seems to be correct in hindsight. So now we have the SEC, the CFTC and the Federal Reserve that were all working with Joseph Lubin. Not just that, but remember JP Morgan was there before the public mainnet launch. 
the corruption runs very, very deep in these large federal and financial institutions. Proof once more that Eastgate is very, very real and Stephen Ralph is about to blow the whole lid off this whole scandal, this whole crisis. And in quite comedic fashion, the bad news, the losses, the insanity for the SEC doesn't stop there. As Empower Oversight has filed a new lawsuit against the SEC because of its refusal to comply with the Freedom of Information Act. Again, how corrupt must you be? It's your right to have this information, but they're refusing to do so. They are not above the law. They're meant to uphold it. And in the midst of all this breaking news about the SEC, it's important to note and remember that we actually have to give thanks to Ripple and XRP for this because Ripple and XRP are the ones that kickstarted this whole legal fiasco against the SEC, unveiling all the corruption that they had and letting everyone else have the courage to stand up against the SEC. The SEC attacked Ripple and XRP first and this led to many of the XRP community to incur damages and question what will happen to our gold standard of capital markets. But what the SEC didn't expect is for us to uncover the greatest fraud ever attempted, the Eastgate crisis, but this is where the truth has led us. And on a finishing note, we've got a very massive video here with Ripple CEO Brad Garninghouse, where he talks about why ICOs, initial coin offerings, are corrupt. Remember, before you listen to this video, that Jay Clayton, former SEC chairman, allowed all of this to go on and almost every one of them were built on Ethereum. More proof once again that Ethereum, Eastgate, is very, very real. I think a lot of the ICOs, and I would say, you know, certainly over half and maybe as many 90 plus percent of these ICOs, I don't understand what the real use case is of the token. Mm. And if there's not a real use case, it's really a securities offering. And if it's a securities offering, there's not regulatory uncertainty. It should be regulated as a securities offering. Mm. So, uh, look, I, I, again, I, I recognize that many people may disagree with that, but, you know, some people forget why regulations have evolved in the securities issuance. It's because there was a lot of fraud. There was a lot of people taking advantage and preying upon investors. You know, in some ways, what's happening with ICOs is making angel investing more accessible. Well, angel investing has historically been, hey, someone I know and someone I trust is building a business and I want to invest in that. But when I hear someone in Bangkok buying an ICO for a company in Miami that is doing who knows what, I think, how do you know that they're not going to take all of that value in their ICO and go surfing for the next three years? Well, I mean, you know, if I, you know, I, I think there were some really recent numbers that came out of uh, Bitcoin.com or Bitcoin News that said that of 900 ICOs over since the beginning of 2017, uh, 46 have failed. 46 percent have failed, uh, meaning that either they fa failed to raise the money, or the companies went under after they raised the money, uh, or, or the company had already gone under. They raised the money anyway, and, and they raised the money anyways. And that 13, another 13 percent are near failure meaning that they've raised money and then all of a sudden they've closed down their website, shut off communications and are not responding to investors anymore. So we're talking about a, a 59% uh, you know, garbage rate. Um, so you know, I, I, I understand that uh, the great majority of, of ICOs are, are garbage. In the words of Patrick McHenry, this must end. We have to see change. Otherwise, America will be left behind while the rest of the world continue with their innovation and puts regulations in place for this new monetary system. This SEC is done for. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, go speak good day and good night.